Now on WSAR's Breakfast Club, it's the Bristol Community College Update. A monthly visit with President Laura Douglas on 1480 WSAR and 95.9 FM. Sponsored by Bristol Community College. Dreams within reach. Visit bristolcc.edu. 824 here on WSAR. Joining us now. On the phone line is Bristol Community College Vice President of Academic Affairs, Andrew Fisher. Good morning, Andrew. Hey, how you doing? Good. How's your weekend? It was fantastic. How about you? Yeah. Boy, you couldn't get uh, you couldn't order any better weather than we had yesterday, huh? Ooh. Isn't that the truth? Yep. Nice little chill feels good. And I love it. I love a little crisp air in the morning and then warm it up. And then not having to use the expensive air conditioner <laughs> at, at night. <laughs> uh, Andrew, is, true. Yeah, Andrew is here to discuss how the college academic programs are preparing students for the workforce. And uh, Andrew, the question uh, here is um, the majority of college students are in school to get a career, right? Mm-hmm. That's kind of uh, yeah. what most people go to college for. How is Bristol Community College preparing all the students for the workforce? That's a great question. Uh, at Bristol, we're working hard to align all the learning outcomes that are typically defined in the coursework that a student goes through. Um, we're trying to align those more closely with the needs of our employers. And so that means more than just ensuring that we're providing the educational uh, program mix, um, but also to make sure that the things that students are, are learning within that program mix are closely aligned with what industry is looking for. Um, so really, it's kind of a focus on skills, if you will, um, skills that, that are needed uh, in a chosen profession or occupation that have been identified by employers. We want to make sure that those are embedded within the curriculum, uh, sort of like just like just the, the did you know section, right? <laughs> the most useful skill might be a little more than simply the ability to do laundry. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is an important skill, though, one that my daughter does not know how to do. Matter of fact, the other, she, the other day she she has this habit of plopping her clothes in front of the washing machine. Okay. So I, I, I put up with it for forever, and then I said, Abby, why do you put your clothes in front of the washing machine? She goes, because I don't know if the clothes you have put in the washer are already clean or dirty. All right. She's got a point. Yeah. So I said, well, if they're wet, why don't you put them in the dryer? That'd be a help. <laughs> so we're working on those things. What, what do you think are some of the things that – when when a kid signs up to go a child decides to go decides to go to BCC or an adult for that matter, what are some of the skills that they hope that they learn to go out into the workforce? What are what are some things that people really want to learn how to do? You think? Yeah, that's a, again another great question. For sure, we want to make sure the students are uh, have the technical abilities to meet the employment needs, right? And so maybe they need to learn some some particular aspects that are taught in embedded internships, or have some clinical experiences, or even have some kind of experiential educational experience that bridges the learning that's happening in the classroom with the way that it looks in an employment space. But really, again, it's it's mostly focusing on the proof of the skills that are tied directly to what industry is telling us the students need to know. Mm-hmm. In some cases, that's very specific, but in most cases, it's things where we're, we focus on communication, critical thinking, life skills, durable skills, um, um, the, those those skills that um, extend beyond simply just one particular um, function within the educational environment. Yeah, those things are so important, especially if you're face to face with potential employers now and you know to me a lot of kids are losing that those 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 personal skills, skills those yeah. one-on-one stuff yeah. uh how long does a change right. like this take to install at the uh college andrew a long time a long time <laughs> um because we're talking about not just educational systems that are steeped in history, a very rich tradition that has proven that it can produce graduates that can succeed in a workplace, but also retooling the workplace as well. You know, I, I think about Governor Healy's executive order that she signed many a uh, couple months ago, I guess January-ish or something like that, um, where where she's encouraging and even demanding that state agencies move to skill-based hiring. That's wonderful and that's amazing, um, the, but it's very difficult to accomplish because are these agencies able to identify the skills based on simply the fact that somebody has a degree from a college, or do they need information that provides a little more fidelity? And so we as an institution um, are supporting our students in, in the educational process 
helping them to document what those skills are, and then helping to build a pipeline where those skills can be both um, identified, but also the students can turn into employees based on those skills, where the degree doesn't stand as a surrogate for lots of different things. So it takes a long time. Yeah, there we go, students. Get to Bristol Community College, learn some life skills. Yes. Not everybody can be a TikTok influencer. We need other people (laughs) to do other things out there. (laughs) <laughs> Andrew. So true. Yes, very. Andrew, thanks for joining us today. We appreciate your time. And uh, hopefully we can talk again about some other things at some point in the future. Thanks, y'all. Thank you. Have a, Have great, a great day. day. You too.